In the 1930s and 40s, a wave of horror movies emerged from Universal Studios. Relying on pure atmosphere, these films were massive hits. However, by the late 1940s, the wave of universal horror films were decidedly for children, ending as suggested by Christian Metz's theory of the genre cycle in parody. Horror needed reinventing, and in the late 1950s, a new wave of horror films from the United Kingdom with blood and gore, and for the first time in color, would change the genre forever. The new wave of horror films were produced by Hammer Studios, and so they were dubbed Hammer Horror. These films were positioned as the successors to the classic Universal horror films, but they never received critical adulation in their time, partly due to their genre and shocking content. As a result, the filmmakers behind these films never got the same attention as auteurs like Hitchcock or Truffaut, but they demonstrated just as strong a creative vision and a significant influence on the films that followed them. This defines an auteur, regardless of genre or critical praise. For instance, the first and best of these Hammer Horror productions were directed by Terence Fisher, who explored themes of spirituality and religion in all of his films due in part to his strict Christian science upbringing. And in comparison to other horror protagonists, and forget this demon monster theory of yours, it doesn't make sense. Fisher's protagonists, often played by Peter Cushing or Christopher Lee, relied on faith. <laughs> and unlike the universal Frankenstein films, which sympathized with the monster as an other, Fisher's films focused on Frankenstein himself, positioning him as a clear villain for defying God's will. Terence Fisher regarded his films as morality plays. Do you believe in evil? As an idea. Do you believe in the power of darkness? As a superstition. Now there you are wrong. The power of darkness is more than just a superstition. It is a living force which can be tapped at any given moment of the night. The soul was also a major theme. And whatever weakens the human soul, vice, greed, hatred, solitude, these bring the spirit of the wolf to the fore. This is not Lucy, the sister you loved. It's only a shell, possessed and corrupted by the evil of Dracula. Deliberate her soul and give it eternal peace. Let go. You don't understand, Rex. It's not just your life you're risking, it's your very soul. For one hour, my body had died, and yet my soul remained. Was it trapped within me? Could it be trapped forever? Could I trap it myself? And good always conquers evil. Like any accomplished auteur, Fisher's influence can be seen in many other filmmakers' work. Spielberg's Temple of Doom is essentially a retelling of Fisher's Stranglers of Bombay, and frequent collaborators with Fisher would often appear in his fans' work. Michael Myers, Freddy, and Jason owe their existence to films like Frankenstein Created Woman which works as a kind of proto-slasher. Speaking of Frankenstein Created Woman, Martin Scorsese cites it as one of his favorite films, saying, if I single this one out, it's because here they actually isolate the soul. The implied metaphysics are close to something sublime. 
But it's Quentin Tarantino who owns one of its only surviving 16mm film prints. Tarantino frequently cites Terence Fisher as his favorite British film director. All you gotta do is put two sticks together and you gotta cross. Yeah, he's right. Peter Cushing does that all the time. Guillermo del Toro cites Hammer as an instrumental influence, saying, Terence Fisher was already great at playing with very controlled camera moves, but he was very lurid in the content. I always think his Dracula and Frankenstein movies are rich in visual design, even when they turn really violent or very erotic in many instances. This influence can be clearly seen in Del Toro's Crimson Peak. And the list goes on. By the 1970s, Fisher's films were subject to parody themselves, and once again, horror had to reinvent itself. But Fisher's films played an instrumental role in changing the genre, and cinema as a whole, forever. <laughs> 